A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. did more to bring law and order to the early western United States than the masked rider of the plains. But just as important as his work in bringing criminals to justice was the way in which he safeguarded the lives and property of the honest settlers. It was his leadership, his strength and courage that made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's going to be trouble! We've got to hurry! Hello, Silver! Away! Dr. Rice had finished his examination, and old Jed Pelkey moved uneasily in his chair as he waited for the verdict. Doc, what is it? Can't you tell me? Jed, just one question more. How long have you had these headaches? Oh, they come on first about two years ago. But it's just been lately they got so fierce. Doc, what's causing them? Eating or drinking something or shouldn't damn it? Jed, I'm afraid it's worse than that. Much worse. Yeah. And there can be no question about my diagnosis. Of course, if you'd like to make the trip to Denver and consult another man there... No, I... not me. I'll take your word for anybody's. I just want to know what's wrong. Then I'll hold nothing back. If you did, be a mistaken kindness. You should have time to prepare yourself. For what? The loss of your sight. Oh, what was that you said? I'm sorry, Jed. There's no mistake and there's no hope. One day and soon you'll be blind. Totally blind. I could give you my reasons for saying that, but you wouldn't understand them. No. No, Doc. It can't be. Believe me, Jed, I'd rather have lost an arm than told you. Why, Doc, right now I can see as good as when I was a boy. You must be mistaken. No, Jed. But, Doc, you know that's where... That's the ugly feature of this. Except for those headaches, you will probably notice nothing until... Until... Your sight goes just like that. Just that sudden. Doc, it ain't fair. Try not to let this depress you, Jed. You'll find compensation. But you don't savvy. Doc, I don't count. Who am I? All I am is just an old fellow that's lived his life and had his fun, can step out of the picture any time. You think I'm afraid of being blind? <laughs> Doc, it takes more than that to scare an old Indian fighter. I'm very glad you take it like that. But that ain't the point. Jed, what's wrong? Doc, you ever owe anybody a kindness? A rare and big kindness that you'd planned for years on paying back. I'm not sure I know what you mean. If I told you, would you keep it secret? Swear you'll never tell anybody? Of course, Jed. Well, Doc, once I was close to losing everything. I'd signed a contract to deliver cattle. And that contract called for me to pay a whopping cash fine if I didn't. Oh. And then things went wrong. Texas Fever and Rustlers both took just about half my cattle. You couldn't make up the herd. 
I didn't have the cash to buy more. And by the same token, of course, I didn't have the cash to pay that penalty. I'd have had to sell out. A bad situation, Jed. It could have been. What saved you? You mean, who saved me? It was Nate Irwin. He knew the fix I was in. Never said a word, but one day he showed up at my place with all the cattle I needed. He'd rounded them up and drove them over with a couple of his men. That sounds like a real friend. Real? <laughs> Doc, you don't know how real. I didn't know myself till later. You know what I found out about five years afterwards? What? At the time he'd brought me them steers, he'd been in almost as bad a fix as me. He had a contract to fill, too. But in them days, he owned one of the finest outfits anywhere around. So he put a mortgage on it, without even hinting to me he'd have to. He just took the chance that I was honest and would pay him back in time so as he wouldn't lose out. And did you? Oh, sure. But that ain't paying him back for the risk he took. No, of course not. As a matter of fact, Jed, I hadn't known that Nate ever had been very well off. Wouldn't think it to see him and his missus now, would you? Most certainly not. Well, it was. Of course, I've come down some myself. But not as bad as them. Me and Samantha still got us a few dollars saved away and a decent place to live. Nothing like that old shack Nate's in. It ain't hardly fit for hogs. And you feel you want to help him? Want to. Doc, I've got to. I'd hate myself till the day I died if I didn't. Have you thought of a way? Well, that's just it. Duh. Do you think folks like the Irwins belong in town in a place like the one they got? No. Of course they don't. They ain't town folks. They belong out there on the prairie by themselves. Now, maybe to you that sounds funny. But the folks like Nate and me, there ain't no other right way to live. It's the way we was raised. Neighbors cramp us. Shucks, the only reason I moved from Kansas was because it was getting too crowded. Crowded? Mm Mm-hmm. Three fellas rode past our place in a week. (laughs) I see. So you know what I've been doing most of this last year? No, Jed. Well, I haven't let anybody know. But I've been building Nate and his missus a house. What? You bet. And when it's finished, it'll be a beauty. I cut and hauled and trimmed the logs myself. Ain't a nail or a peg in her that I didn't put there with these two hands. And it's almost done. And that's why... That's why nothing can happen to me till it's done. I haven't the cash to hire anybody. And besides, it wouldn't be the same. Oh, gosh, Doc, don't you savvy? Don't you see why I can't go blind till my work's done? I can't, I tell you, I just can't. How much time will you need? Not over another month. Mm. Won't they last that long, Doc? Won't they? Jed, they might. Gosh, if they only would. And they might not. It's hard to say. I can tell you only that the odds are very much against your sight lasting more than a month. Oh, Doc. And it may be less. Then I haven't a day to waste. I... Why, Doc, I can't afford to throw away even one minute. Don't overdo it. Overdo it? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Doc. Don't bother to call. From now on, I'm going to be busy day and night. <laughs> The site Jed had selected for the house he was building was a small, sunlit valley knee-deep in rich grass. It was far from town. Jed knew it to be just the kind of place his old friends would have chosen to live out their lives. And its isolation made it possible for him to keep his plan a secret. He kept the promise he'd made to Dr. Rice, driving himself on in a furious race with time. The sound of his labors filled the valley. But he didn't know that a neighbor, made curious by his continued absence from home had decided to find out the reason for it. It's hot work. Now, what did I do with them nails? It was right here. <laughs> well, doggone. What? Yank Snavely. Well, this is where you've been hiding yourself. <laughs> Come on, jump down from there a second. I'd like to hear what you figure you're doing. <laughs> you're doggone right. I'll be down there. <laughs> What are you doing here? How'd you sneak up without me hearing you? I mean, I got as much right here as you. You were spying on me. No, I needn't put it that way. I was just curious, is all. And I didn't sneak up on you. You was just making so much racket you couldn't hear me. Here's my horse. (laughs) Gosh, Jed, you act like I'd found you robbing a stage. It'd please you if you had. All this sneaking around, that's what you are. You're worse than a coyote. 
sneaking and spying and all the time trying to find out folks' secrets. Yank, someday somebody's going to get good and tired of you and you'll get a horse with him. Hey, old fool, you can't talk to me like that. It's what you deserve. Now, I suppose you run back to town and tell what you've seen. Any reason why I shouldn't? Building yourself a new house, ain't you? What's there to hide about that? Well, it ain't for me. No? Well, who's it for, then? That ain't your business, either. Why not? Because I say it ain't. <laughs> You're mighty unfriendly, Jay. There ever been a time you and me was friendly? Well, I've tried to be. You've tried? <laughs> yeah, just like a polecat tries. Only between the two of you, I'd get friendly with the polecat first. Now, go on, get out of here. I don't... Only before you go, let me tell you something. Hmm? Don't you tell nobody what you seen or where. Don't you go back and say even one word. If you do... <laughs> if I do, then what? I'll fix you. I'll fix you somewhere. Doggone, Jed. You act like you really wanted this kept quiet. Ain't that what I said? Well, I don't see why you... You don't have to. <laughs> oh, but I ain't one to spoil things for a fella. Tell you what I'll do, Jed. I, uh... I'm kind of hollered up right now and need some cash. About, uh, about a hundred dollars. Huh? <laughs> Give me the loan of a hundred dollars and I'll never say a word. Black me! Hey, now. You'll work that game before. Hey, you... you call it borrowing, but you never pay it back. That's what you're sneaking around for all the time. Just to pick up information you think will be handy. It won't pay up? Not one penny. Then I'll talk from one end of the counter to the other. You'll do no such thing. I'll Don't threaten, threaten me, you old fool. No, I'll I'll break your head. Stop. 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 Mass. A crook. Yes. Pretty young and husky to start a fight with a man Jed's age. Uh, we we yeah. wasn't fighting, stranger. It was just a Jed said something I didn't like. Don't him. bother. I heard and saw it. But That's it... your horse there? Sure, but... Then mountain travel. <laughs> That's telling him, stranger. All it did say Yank was a coward when somebody'd stand up to him. Mister, what are you meddling for? In the first place, I don't like your looks. Well, you... In the second, I don't like what I've heard about you. Now, look, and mister... And in the third, if you don't get in the saddle and clear out, I'll give you what you meant to give well, Jed. Yeah, I'm going, stranger. I'm going. Now, one moment. What? See that block of wood? Uh-huh. Good. And what's this? Oh, that draw. Oh, you, you hit it. Strange. Well, what was that for? Jed told you not to talk. Well, I won't. I won't. That was to show you what might happen if you do. No, no, I won't say a word, Stranger. Honest, I won't. You, you won't have to worry about me. Go on your way. Get up. Get up there, Mark. Come on, get up. Get up. <laughs> Stranger, thanks a million. Yank won't talk, neither. I know him. He's too scared. And I won't, Jed. You can trust me. I don't know why you want this kept a secret, but as far as I'm concerned, it'll remain one. It's a surprise some friends of mine, that's all. If they knew about it ahead of time, it'd take most of the fun out of it. It's a fine place. Ain't it a dandy? How soon will it be done? Well, well, I'm hoping in another week. I'm riding to meet a friend, Jed. We'll be back this way in just about a week. I'll stop to see how it looks when it's finished. Friend, you're welcome many times. Come on, Silver. Hello, you, Silver? Away! Jed, convinced now that others might discover him, redoubled his efforts. Then, exactly one week later, his wife paused in her work at the sound of his footsteps outside. Smancy! <laughs> it's done. It's finished. I got it done in time. Oh, Jed, that's fine. <laughs> Gosh, honey, now I can tell him. <laughs> I can't hardly wait till I see Nate's face when I... Jed! What is it? I... I ain't gonna see his face, honey. Jed, you mean... Mm-hmm. It's come. Give me your hand, honey. Help me to a chair. The valley I mentioned is just over this hill, Tonda. Uh, I wanted you to see it. It's a perfect place for a home. When I saw that old fellow building, I wondered why no one had thought to choose this spot before. All right, plenty good. Maybe he's still working at it. Uh, it's quite a house. I want to ask him if he's had any trouble with Yank while I was gone. Me know that, fella. Him no good. A sneak and a coward. Uh, well, it should be just below us, Kimasabi. Pull up. You look. What? Oh, oh, that's oh, it. has gone. gone. Oh. Burn, Tato. Burn to the ground. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Ever since the time when he'd been warned by his doctor that he must lose his sight, Jed had nerved himself to meet the tragedy with courage. His affairs were in order, he was past his active prime, and most satisfactory thought of all, the debt of gratitude he owed Nate Irwin would soon be paid. That evening, although his wife had gone to summon Dr. Rice and he was left alone in a world of darkness, Jed found it possible to smile to himself. (laughs) Ain't so bad, not really. Not when you're at my time of life. When you get my age, you kind of like to look back on the past. (laughs) Well, I wonder if not being able to see don't help some. Makes thinking easier. (laughs) Anyhow, that's one way of looking at it. A man's a fool to fret over what can't be helped. (laughs) And Nate. Gosh. Don't give a fella a mighty swell feeling to know he can do a good turn for somebody that done him one once. <laughs> I'd a heap rather be blind than able to do folks favors, and I would have my sight back again and not be able to. At least. I... That's you, Samantha. Who's there? Who is it? Answer up. Who's standing there? Don't you know I can't see? Who's there? Yank. Yeah. Sit down. I ain't gonna hurt you. I Come don't want to sit down. Past your wife coming here. <laughs> that's how I knew what happened to you. And that's how I knew I'd find you here alone. Well, what do you want? Thought it mighty fine the other day when that crook run me away, didn't you? You... You harm me and he'll pay you for it. Is it so? Just lay a hand on me. Just try it and see. Think I don't know he cleared out? He'll be back. He said so. You mean you say so? Uh-uh, Jed. Don't hope for that. Your outlaw pod's long gone. Get out. Not till I tell you what I come here for. Uh, you are? Oh, forget it. Didn't I tell you I wasn't going to harm you? You better not. <laughs> <laughs> At least the ways I ain't the way you're expecting. Huh? You laughed at me when that masked hombre got tired. I don't Yeah, mind. you laughed. I heard you. You thought it was right funny. Called me a sneak and a coward, too, didn't you? Said I spied on folks. Acted like he was too good for my kind. Yank, yeah, what's the matter well, with Well, nobody you? can treat me that way. I get even when somebody tries it. Yeah, I get even. Yank, Yank, what you are you talking about? You proud of that house, weren't you? I don't Had want Had a you... big secret about it, huh? Wouldn't tell me nothing. Told me to keep my mouth shut. Wait. <laughs> now, listen. Well, now ride out to that there valley and see how much is left of that secret. What's that? Hey, go on out there. You know what you'd see if your eyes had come back on you, Jed? You know what you'd see? You Nothing don't... but ashes. Oh, eh? no. <laughs> yeah, that's what you'd see, just ashes. And if you want to know how come, it's because I set it afire. No, you didn't. You couldn't have. No, you anchor. You're joking. You must be. I got even, Jed. I got even. Oh, my And if house. you think there's anything you can do about it, you're local. That's why I come here when you was alone. So they could tell you what happened and there wouldn't be witnesses. The law of fiction. When it's just your word again, mine. <laughs> tell the law and see just how far you get. Where are you? Stand still. If I could just get my hands on you. No. <laughs> Bump the table. You think you can get me when you can't even see? <laughs> You better sit down. Where are you? Where are you? Let me get my hands on you. You just had the nerve to stand up to me. (laughs) Well, so long, Jed. I'm just sorry you can't see for yourself what happened to that house. Wait, you. Wait. Come back. Get up the best way you can. Adios. You gotta help me up. <laughs> Something amuses you, Yank. What the... Remember me? Well, you're, you're that masked man. Right. What do you want? You didn't talk, did you, Yank? No, no, I never, I swear I never... No, of course you didn't. You chose to get your revenge in another way. Oh, let me alone, let me alone, stranger. Take him, Tom. No, uh, no let him. Get him up into the saddle. No, uh, up, keep no, him. No, get no, up, Kimsabi. Him, uh, him not get way. No, let go. Yank, keep still for a moment. We trailed you here, Yank. We heard the boast you made in there. Oh, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. You struck at a defenseless man. You destroyed the one thing he could hold to and take pleasure from. At a time when he needs every ounce of his courage. No, I... Well, you'll pay for that, Yank. Oh, no, no, Once don't. Once more, I'm seeing to it your revenge is made useless. Time to take him to camp. Uh, where you go? To meet Jed's wife before she returns home. 
Come on, Silver. Hurry, old fellow. Hurry. Hey, engine. What are you going to do with me? Will the masked man drill me? Will he? Huh? Will he? Huh, huh, huh. You wait. You find out. Get him up, Scout. No, no. Put Get him up. Put him up. Put him up. An hour later, the Lone Ranger stopped Jed's wife and the doctor on the trail from town and told them what had happened at the ranch house. Well, that's what Tonto and I heard, Mrs. Pelkey. That's why I stopped you and Dr. Rice, and why I've asked you to do as I have suggested. Poor Jed. Poor Jed. These last months, it seemed that was just about all he lived for. The joy of doing this for Nate after what Nate once done for us. I'm glad you told me his plan. Stranger? Yes, Doctor? I apologize for what I said when you stopped us. But at night, and that mask... You thought it was a hold-up, of course. Well, I don't blame you, but it couldn't be helped. I had to see you before you saw Jed. Naturally. Mrs. Pelkey, you'll do as I've asked. You'll tell Jed you saw Nate in town, and tomorrow he's riding out to the valley where Jed built the house? Oh, yes. I'll call on Nate myself tonight. You can expect him at your home sometime late tomorrow afternoon. We'll be looking for him. And don't be afraid that Nate won't help us. I'm sure he will. Anyone would. We all prefer to speak the truth, but sometimes even truth must take second place to a man's happiness. Stranger, I'll never forget this. Oh, we'll be driving on. But I'd like to say... Yes? I don't know who you are. I won't ask. But what you're doing is worthy of someone of whom we've all heard. Who, Doctor? The Lone Ranger. What? Get up, that boy. Get up. Go on. All right, Silver, old fellow. First to see Nate. Then to have another talk with Yank back at our camp. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Yank, I've tried never to make a promise I couldn't keep. I'll do what you told me, mister. I'll do it. I think you'd better. Because we call on Jed tomorrow and you attempt to double-cross me. No, no, I won't. Can't you believe me? I won't double-cross you. I swear I won't. If you do, I promise you'll regret it forever. Don't forget that for a single moment. Late the following day, as the hour grew closer when Jed expected old Nate's arrival, he became increasingly tense with dread of the coming encounter. Seated in a chair that had been moved to face the door, he held tightly to his wife's hand as if seeking comfort. Samantha, wasn't that a horse stopping outside? Wasn't it? No, Jed. It's nothing. Go and see. Look out the window. I was sure I heard something. No one's there, Jed. Jed, please. It's not going to be so terrible. Nate will understand. He'll know you tried to help him anyway. Trying and failing is worse than not trying at all. Oh, Jed, how silly. It is. Oh, no, it's What's that? Not. That's a horse, Samantha. I know it is. I know it. I'll see. Jed, it's Nate. Oh, Samantha. I'll let him in. No, no, come here. Oh, come back. here. I want you beside me. The door ain't locked. You can get in. Honey, give me... Give me your hand again. Poor Jed. There he is. Uh, uh, call out. He, he's to come in. Uh, uh, come in? Poor Jed. Uh, I've got to tell you. No, wait. But I've I got to... I wish it hadn't turned out this way, Nate. I wish to heavens it hadn't. If I could have helped it, you'd never have known about it at all. Listen, Nate, Jed. Nate, it was Yank done it. Yank set fire to it. I... I won it for a surprise, to pay you back, but I... Yank set fire to what? The house I built you. He said... Why, Jed, you're loco. Uh Gosh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I've been out there. I've looked at it. Gosh, Jed, it's just about the finest house I've ever seen. Honest it is, Jed. I I wish there was some way to thank you. Oh, Mama be so doggone happy. She can have a garden again, like she's always wanted, with flowers and... Oh, 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 Jed, you can't get up. Leave me be. Nate, are you telling the truth? Is, is that house still standing, is it, Nate? Gosh, is it? Well, I should smile, it is. 
And the governor himself ain't got a better one. Well, then I... Jake, get in here and tell Jed the truth. I hope I'll talk. I'll talk. Okay, honey, who, who is it? Who's with Yank? The masked man, Jed. The masked man you told me you'd met before. Then he did come back. And brought this fellow with me. Yank, tell him. Jed, I, I lied to you. I never set fire to that place he was building. I, I never... I never told you that just to make you feel better. I was sorry at you, but it ain't been harmed any. It's still standing there. Oh, honey, help me to sit down again. Here, Jed. Hank, I'll tell you something. I ought to be so all fired mad at you for what you made me go through. I, I should tell the masked man to kick you out of my house. Oh, listen, No, Jed. wait. That's what I ought to do, but I can't. I reckon you wouldn't savvy. But he ain't. When a fellow's as happy as I am this minute, he... Well, he, he just can't be mad at nobody. <laughs> We're going, Zed. Come along, Yank. Well, stranger, won't, won't you wait for my thanks? Can't you stop a while? Perhaps one day, Jed, we'll meet again. Adios. Well, Yank, Tonto and I are riding on. You won't have to come back again. I'll do what you told me. I know you will. We've convinced Jed that his work wasn't destroyed. We've made him happy. He's never to find out the truth. Understand? Oh, sure. You'll rebuild that place exactly as he planned it, mm -hmm. at your own expense. I'll do it, I'll do it. Yes, Yank. Because Tonto and I will return this way sometime. If we see that Nate and his wife aren't living in the home Jed planned for them... You won't have to go gunning for me. Honest, you won't. I see you know what I mean. Come, Tonto. Oh. Get him up, Skull. Hello, Silver Hawaii! The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>